Welcome back to Crystal Clear. I'm Ashrek Vox, and with the Steven Universe movie experience being complete, theorizing before and now after the movie, as always with Steven Universe, there are lingering questions. The movie has brought its fair share of head scratches to the fandom. There's a lot of dangling plot points that are either amplified or created with the release of this film. Whether if it's something that carried over from the show itself, or a heavily debated quote unquote plot hole. So I compiled a list on these various unanswered questions, coming to a total of about 20, which of course we're going to run through today. And of course, spoiler warning in case you have not watched Steven Universe the movie, get caught up and then come back. Alright, so let's start with number one, a question that only more and more people are asking by the day, where did Spinell get the injector and rejuvenator from on short notice? As it stands, Steven Universe the movie takes place over the course of about a day, maybe 24 full hours. Steven has his inauguration as Pink Diamond, reveals he will not live on Homeworld, and then that morning, work back to Earth. Earth, spend just a little bit of time with Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, and then Spinell arrives around that afternoon. You could even argue late afternoon at the most. So within just a few hours, Spinell was able to go from Pink Diamond's garden to Earth and pick up some weapons along the way. And not just some tiny weapons either, not just a gem destabilizer, but something that can kill an entire planet and something that can reset gems back to square one, erasing all of their memories and progress throughout their existence. So where did Spinell, who's been missing for 6,000 years and got around interacting with the diamonds since they reunite with her at the end of the film, get her hands on technology that pose such high level threats. Now I did theorize on this in a separate video on something that I hope could become a plot point in the upcoming season, so please after this video check that out if you haven't, and probably all of these unanswered questions I would tackle in a future video. But yes, as it stands, there is a huge question mark on how Spinell got her hands on everything and make it to Earth in just hours. But moving on, we got number two, Bismuth's new form. So one of the biggest question marks I've had since the trailer that I thought would maybe get touched on in the film before watching it and discovering they just ignore it entirely was the fact that Bismuth has a new outfit, one that's drastically different from her last form now wearing overalls instead of an apron. Now while I'm sure she was given this new form as a way to blend in with the rest of the gems and their current reformations being the most earth they've ever been, it feels like they are intentionally leaving out the details for a storyline they can tackle later in the show. Perhaps a flashback episode. Now a lot of you guys by now may know how crazy my mind works. So I already have my own ideas behind this form, but as it stands, in an era of peace where even Amethyst didn't get poofed, it is weird and almost alarming that Bismuth somehow got poofed and reformed off screen. Staying on track with Bismuth, this goes into number three. Why are Bismuth, Peridot, and Lapis so close now? Yes, the three probably did some bonding off screen and change your mind. Fixing up the diamond ships together, piloting the homeworld together, and then making their way into White Diamond's ship while Steven is facing the ultimate identity crisis. I get it, a relationship between these people would dramatically increase after enduring such a string of events. But Bismuth is always with Peridot and Lapis in this film. And yeah, you could argue it's because they're putting Little Homeworld together, which side note, I believe this is a testament to how strong Peridot and Lapis are now, emotionally speaking. Although yes, they are pretty tough cookies, but fans have been quick to point out that the warp pad in Little Homeworld World is built upon exactly where Lapis ripped out the barn. So although Peridot and Lapis had their issues, I think it's safe to say that at this point, they've worked through it. But even when they're not working on Little Homeworld in this movie, they're still always together. I get Bismuth is best friends with everybody, rightfully so, she's amazing, but suddenly there's a new Homeworld trio? I'd wager that during the two year time skip, something major could have happened that solidified Bismuth, Peridot, and Lapis as a new trio of their own. Number four, what was in Lion's treasure chest? All right, so this is definitely one of the big ones. Lion's treasure chest has always been a mystery in Steven Universe. What is in that chest? Why did Rose leave it? Why isn't there a key? What's an even bigger slap to the face? The show itself only drew direct attention to the chest one time, in the episode Lion 4 alternate ending, when Steven tries to open the chest with his giant pink key. To go from that to the chest just being open unexplained, and it appears it was opened with the missing key, it wasn't ripped open or anything, but 
at the same time, Amethyst could just shapeshift her finger into a key and like unlock the chest that way, so regardless, that's a huge missing chapter of Steven's life that we just didn't get to see. At least not this current point in time, as I am very optimistic this is definitely being held for a future episode. Ultimately, what could have been inside that chest is haunting me at night? For all we know, there could be multiple things in the chest. Why stop at one? It's a treasured chest. It should be full of all sorts of riches and goodies. But then again, Pink Diamond's kinda goofy, so like, I don't know what would excite her enough to put something in a treasure chest. Number five, why is Rose's flag missing? When you look in Lion's Mane, Rose's flag has the tent pole, but the flag itself, gone. What? Why? Number six, why has an onion aged? All right, this actually upsets me. There's been a two year time skip, Steven's older, Connie's older. While we didn't get the best look at PD, he does look older. Yet Onion. Onion had two years to grow, yet he didn't. I mean, is he an alien? What is going on here? Is he just that young where years don't really do much? But I feel like until you're at the age of like 17, 18, you pretty much look like a different person every year. You're always maturing and always evolving. So what the f- Number seven, where's Jasper? A two year time skip can make or break a lot of things. And for fan favorite Jasper, a lot of fans are wondering what would happen to her after Change Your Mind. Would she just be redeemed off screen in this two year time skip, being buddy buddy with the crystal gems? Or would she remain in adversary, pushing everyone away and resisting change. Well, I'm happy to declare that the movie doesn't tell us jack squat. That's another big open mystery, although that likely means they are saving that for the upcoming season. But honestly, if she's not on Earth, if she's not in Little Homeworld, then chances are she is on Homeworld, and she's not on speaking terms with Steven. Number 8. Where's Pumpkin? So two of the three pets in the series appear in the movie, Lion and Cat Steven. Yet Pumpkin is nowhere to be seen. Is Pumpkin dead? Is Pumpkin in Little Homeworld? Does someone else own Pumpkin? Did Paradigm Lapis have to give Pumpkin up? Was Pumpkin just chilling inside Steven's house? Look, I'm getting the vibes that somebody has an issue with orange characters with green spots. Just saying, just saying. Number nine. Who lives in Steven's house now? You may not think this is a pressing question, but oh, 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 trust me, it is. Something that I just want that the barn took away from me, where all of the crystal gems interacting with each other have a different combination of gems have a presence in each episode. But because Paradigm and Lapis lived in the barn, and Lapis didn't really consider herself a crystal gem, episodes where Steven hung out with Paradigm and Lapis, or just moments where Paradigm and Lapis were on screen with the rest of the team, were very few and far between. So now that the barn is gone for good, and Steven's house has a new floor, with a room all to himself, what is the living situation of the rest of the Crystal Gems? Are Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, Bismuth, Paradigm, Lapis all under the same roof now? Or is Bismuth crashing at Little Homeworld? What about Paradigm Lapis? It makes the most sense for all of the gems to now be under the same roof, but I am not making any solid bets until we see it with our own eyes. Number 10. Are Steven and Connie dating? Steven and Connie's relationship is definitely a lot more intimate in the movie. Connie giving Steven a peck on the cheek, the two making googly eyes at each other, the frequent blushing, hand holding. You got the whole package except a name. Something I love about Steve Universe is that the characters and their relationships are always evolving. No two characters are at the same level that they were at the beginning of the series. Everything has changed for the better. And while Rebecca Sugar did state in an interview that Steven and Connie's relationship is evolving, that they do love each other, I wonder if we're gonna get something that's rare for most of entertainment. Two big characters actually in a relationship for the end of the series. It's great to see these characters happy and healthy, which is why it's great to get clarification on how healthy they are. Number 11. Does Lars still have the Sun Incinerator? Is he still a space pirate? What are the living situations for the off colors? The most we get of Lars in the movie is him working at the Big Donut, attending Sadie's show, and walking with Sadie during the final song of the film. All great stuff, but it kind of glosses over what Lars did once he got home. Did he relinquish ownership of the Sun Incinerator back to Emerald? Does he still have his space pirate getup? Is this a thing where if he needs to put on the cape again, he will, but for now, he's just enjoying peacetime? And where are the off colors living if not in the Sun Incinerator? Do they make room in Lars's house? Do they have rooms lined up for a little homeworld? They weren't working a little homeworld, and I don't think it's quite open for business just yet. So yes, pretty much everything with the Lars of the Stars plotline, is that just out the window or is it being saved again for some really good stuff? Number 12, what exactly is Little Homeworld? The most we get out of it is that it's a place for gems to 
live if they desire to live on Earth. Mm, but it's also called Little Homeworld. We see things such as Business Forge and a warp pad, so we can assume gems will just be exploring themselves, indulging in various sports that require weapon upgrades, and just enjoy life the crystal gem way. But what does Little Homeworld offer that Homeworld doesn't? Because as it stands, there are galaxy warps. Why couldn't gems just hang out for a day on Earth and then warp back home? This is not a diss at Little Homeworld by any stretch of the imagination. Little Homeworld sounds like a rapper name. If there's a rapper out there named Little Homeworld, World, I'm not dissing you. I'm not dissing Little Homeworld as a concept. I just want to know more about it. Number 13. What happened to the zoo and its humans? This is one of those things that carry over from the series into the movie, but it seems like Homeworld is trying to give up all of their tyrannical ways. And something that deals with Pink Diamond in particular is the human zoo created by Yellow and Blue. What happens to the zoomans? Do they still live there in captivity? Are the rules of the zoo readjusted for freedom? Can the zoomans even learn what that is at this point? I don't think they would adapt well to Earth, so it's probably best that they stay there, but what is there at this current point in time? Number 14. Where are the other Uncorrupted Gems living? While a lot of the Uncorrupted Gems we saw in the film were the ones that appeared at the end of Change Your Mind, there are a lot that just vanished. In particular, our Nephrite, Senti, of course Jasper, but there were also just so many that were memorable enemies from the series. So are they just moving back to Homeworld until Little Homeworld was done? Are they living somewhere else on Earth? Did they want to go back to Homeworld? Because some were crystal gems and some were just homeworld gems who got unlucky. And on that note, number 15, how much has homeworld changed? Again, they're trying to give the tyrannical ways, but what does that mean for the day-to-day -day gems? Are they just chilling, living life, being happy? We know at the beginning of the film, Steven helped dismantle their empires, but are they done with that now? Was that an entire process? Uh, look, what I'm trying to ask is, do these gems still have a purpose? And if so, what is it in this new era of homeworld? And kind of paralleling this question is number 16, how much much has Beach City changed? So this is probably something a lot of people aren't thinking about, but Petey's hot to tot truck is, well, gone. He's back working at Beach City Walk Fries. Mr. Dewey is still running the Big Donut, but again, now Lars is working there with his own confectionery treats, his own creations, his own contributions, such as the Ube Roll. And we see various gems hanging out throughout the town and even showing up to Sadie's Rock Show. How far does the shit and everything go? Do some gems work on the boardwalk now? Do they have a former current? How does the government feel about all of this? I know they kind of just don't matter in the TV universe, but I kind of wish they did. Number 17. What do the diamonds do now? Yeah, uh, yellow, blue, and white were ready to drop everything to live on Earth with Steven. Like, what, what? I mean, you guys are still matriarchs, you guys still have power. Even if it's not an empire, you still can't leave your planet and people without a leader. I'm actually really hoping this gets explored in the next season. Do the diamonds have a purpose now? Is Homeworld going to fall apart? Like, with their armies disbanded, now they are the ones susceptible to an invasion. Just saying, they could be in for a rude awakening. 18. Where's Pink Pearl? This gem spent thousands of years controlled by another diamond. She has a mysterious cracked eye, and when she comes to, after again, thousands of years, Steven just says, welcome back. No, like, her diamond is gone. She wasn't present in the opening of the film with Yellow and Blue Pearl, so her whereabouts are just a big question mark. Number 19. Were Rejuvenators still being used before Steven changed the diamond's minds? Both Spinel and Bismuth are from Era 1. Neither of them were on Homeworld during Era 2, but Bismuth says the Rejuvenators used to be used on Homeworld. Is it just because the diamonds changed their minds and they seized everything? Or was it something utilized during Paradox time? If so, why didn't Paradox herself recognize it? Did they cease to use it because of the Crystal Gems? Because too many gems were joining the Rebellion? You would think something like the Crystal Gems would inspire this weapon to be utilized even more. But again, Paradox didn't recognize it. And last but not least, number 20. Is Steven going to school now? Okay, yes, this sounds completely random, and it is. But with Steven achieving a happily ever after, after. Although, yes, he does clarify Happy Ever After doesn't exist, there'll always be more work to do. He doesn't have to deal with intergalactic tyrants anymore. So, uh, is Steven just chilling now? Or is he going to make an effort to actually start attending high school? He's 16. These are some of the most formative years of his life. Not to say that high school was the end all to be all, it certainly isn't. Far from it. But I still feel like that's something Steven would benefit from. And there you have it 20 unanswered questions from Steven Universe the movie. And I want to hear your thoughts. Thoughts on these unanswered questions, maybe even more unanswered questions I didn't even think of. 
Let us know in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundtableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Vox. We're also on Instagram. Help Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Vox, signing out.